Welcome back to me setting up my journal yet again. She's relentless. <laughs> um, hi! So, it's March. Um, I... Oh god, where to begin? Um, well, okay, first of all, I can tell you. Uh, this is me using my little travel altar tin setup for the first time in a video. Um, I really like just doing a little kind of witchy setup when I set up my journal, do a little invocation, um, you know, burn a candle, burn some incense, that kind of thing. Um, and you can usually see me do that like on a tray or something. But I finally have this little travel altar set up that I'm really happy with. I don't want to tell you how long it took me <laughs> to find that tin and to mess around with the the components until I found something that fit and wouldn't rattle around. Don't even want to tell you how long that took but it's this little like uh, tin pencil case thing that I got from Typo and uh, I've just filled it with things. So uh, you can see me using that there and I'm using this like super hit um, incense which Pete actually turned me on to which I really like. So yeah that's what's going on right now. Anyway, hi, hello. Um, I got sick again, so that's why <laughs> we're here for another journal video and not a different kind of video, uh, but I'll get into that a little more in a minute. Um, but first of all, please excuse the lighting. I actually filmed this clip uh, in the evening, so it's a little dark, but I've been thinking more about my long-term planning instead of just like the single month right because I've been doing these monthly setups for a while and they work really well for me now um but I was wanting a bit more of like a visualization I guess of like the season or the year um and so I am just putting a little like yearly calendar at the start of my journal I'm just covering up my existing covering cover page um and this is kind of just for reference really to help me visualize me moving through the year um I have made some kind of like doodles and attempts at like mapping out a kind of structure for the year in terms of my work and my life, but that's not really set in stone. Um, so for the moment, I just have this kind of like wheel of the year diagram thing, clock, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the main thing I'll be using it in my journal for is just uh, like for reference. And I also want to like shade in as I move through the months so that I can kind of visualize <laughs> moving through the year. And that's it, really. And in a second, you will see me add um, a bunch of different symbols in pencil to those like spokes um, of the wheel, those like star bits. Um, they're not really set in stone. Again, that's like me having an attempt uh, mapping out a structure for like what are the big projects I'm going to be working on at different types of the ty types of the year times of the year um, because I work for myself I have my own business and um, yeah I just don't really have like a, a long-term view of what I'm going to be focusing on so that was an attempt at that I'm not super happy with it to be honest I actually ended up um, drawing tarot cards for each of the months and using them as a kind of prompt to think about what might be the best thing to work on and that ended up working kind of better. So I might switch this up, but I thought I would just let you see it anyway, even though it's not necessarily my final thing. Anyway, back to uh, the setup for this season and this month, because as you'll see, we're doing something a little different this time around. Honey, that's not even... First of all, we're not even doing a month. Even if we were, that's not the right month. So, if you have been following my bullet journal videos for a while, you will remember that I set up something I was calling a season log a while back. I kind of left an empty space for a two-page two spread that was going to be for winter, um, the three months which I consider to be winter, which are December, January and February. Um, and this is it here. As you can see, I've partially filled it in. Um, I tested out that idea of like doing a kind of mini recap of each of the months like using my review of the month and just like noting the most notable events to kind of give me an overview of like what happened over those three months what happened in that season how was it 
why am I so exhausted? <laughs> um, and all of that. And so what I ended up doing was using that space to like sketch out in pencil a layout that I am creating here for spring. Um, because it's been becoming a little bit more clear what I want from a kind of seasonal planning ritual, um, which I don't want to be too involved. Um, but I do like the idea of just having like a little bit further of a, a look ahead than just the one month. So that's what I'm doing now. This is my first time trying a kind of fully fleshed out um, seasonal log or seasonal spread. Um, and this is what I came up with. I have this like sidebar down the side um, for the entire season. As you can see, it says spring. For me, spring means March, April and May. Um, and that sidebar is going to be for a little print, just something cute and, and spring-like. Um, I actually initially thought that I was going to do um, likely projects, so like a list of the projects I thought I was going to work on for that season, um, but I ended up scrapping that because after drawing my tarot cards for each of the individual months, that kind of helped me map it out more. So. Instead, I decided to just use that for a little themes section, which you'll see in a minute. Um, so that like uh, column that I just did is just a map of the different weeks, a kind of like mini calendar, I guess, of each of the months. Um, then the central column is what I'm calling solar list. And that's kind of like um, rituals, things that I want to do of that season. So because it's spring, I want to start feeding my plants again. Um, as it's getting warmer, I want to sort out my bike, pump up the tires, give it a clean because I want to be cycling while it's warmer for spring and summer. Um, just like things like that. Like if I had a seasonal wardrobe, I'd be like switching them out and stuff like that. Um, so those kind of like recurring things I want to be doing uh, by the season, that's solar list. Um, and then review is a space for that little recap that I was talking about that I did for winter. So I'll look at my monthly reviews and just note the most important points so that I have this kind of overview of like, this is what happened. Um, and again, I just find it really helpful to kind of like bookend and bookmark time in this way um, to have like a kind of idea of how my life has been going. Um, and slow down time a little bit from passing so damn quickly and not being able to remember anything that's happened or anything that I've done or see my progress with anything. So that's the idea with this spread. And um, obviously I've set it up and we'll see how it works when I come back to it and kind of close it off and I do that review, I do that bookend thing um, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, and now we are finally into my usual monthly setup. Um, this is for early spring. Uh, it's pretty much lining up with March for me, so um, it's, it's pretty much just March instead of crossing over two months, which is fine. Um, if you haven't seen one of my setups before, um, this is the same kind of structure that I always do. So I'm not going to go through exactly what I'm doing, but it's the same routine. Um, and you can, if you want to see exactly what the steps are and how they work, um, I will link 
the video in which I explain that below. I think it's early autumn in my bullet journal uh, was the first one where I did that and I go through exactly what I'm doing. But I'm not going to repeat myself here. I'm just going to chat about what's been going on. Um, because it's been <laughs> a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, I got ill again for the third time in two months. <laughs> I got really, not seriously ill as in like my life was threatened or I was in hospital or anything, but ill enough that I couldn't fucking do anything for about two weeks. Um, it was really frustrating. Um, <sighs> And, okay, cliff notes. Um, I got ill with a mysterious virus, potentially COVID, um, uh, in January. Um, got tested, never tested positive, but it took me out for about a week. Um, and then I got a UTI, which was more short-lived, but again, just another thing. And then I was better, and so I started working on things. And then I got ill again <laughs> in February. Um, and this time, it was all those COVID classics, you know, the cough, the temperature, the fatigue. Um, and honestly, I was so exhausted uh, that I didn't go get a PCR, which is, I, I, don't, I don't agree with myself, but listen, I was, I was doing the best I could. Um, so I never got it confirmed, but it seemed very COVID-like um, and it just wiped me out for two weeks. So um, it was really frustrating. I was in the middle of working on this video that I'm really excited about, um, this kind of big undertaking, and I just had to stop. Um, so that's why you're seeing a journal video before uh, another type of video right now. Um, <sighs> it is what it is. Look, I, I am a witch and I did augury at the beginning of winter and I don't even know if I really believe in omens <laughs> or bad signs, but I got some big bad vibes <laughs> at the start of winter. I got like fucking batten down the hatches, Rachel. It's going to be a fucking shitstorm. And um, obviously, if in, in the macrocosm, you can you can look at that whatever way you want. But in the microcosm of my particular life, that's definitely what happened. I just had a really rough winter in terms of like physical health and how that affected my work so I'm finally feeling better now thank god um as you can tell by the fact that I'm making this video right now so it's been it's been intense um and I'm still trying I'm still recovering really um if not physically then like mentally from the isolation again um trying to just slowly get those wheels turning to get back into the swing of work and stuff um, but it did mean that I had to um, push back the next uh, enrolment week of the Story Magic Academy, which is m meant to happen in March, and that's not going to happen anymore. So it's going to be in April. Um, if, if that's something of interest to you, just so you know, it's going to be in April. Um, and I also have jury duty this month, um, which is just timing, you know. So I'm trying not to overload myself because that might take out a big chunk of my time as well. But anyway, that's, that's kind of what's been going on. Yeah, so while I was ill, obviously I wasn't getting up too much. I really didn't have a lot of energy for just taking care of those basic needs. Um, and I'm so sick of saying that now because like, you know, when when I I make content about my life, you know, um, and when I'm sick, I really don't have a lot of fun stuff to chat about. But um, I did actually do a lot more drawing while I was sick because it was like a good way to keep my hands busy um, while just watching something, which is kind of all I could do most of the time. So I did a lot more drawing uh, on my iPad and Procreate, noodling about with that. And after the initial um, period of isolation as well, like I, I self-isolated um, pretty much completely, um, but um, Pete rightly pointed out that he is an acute respiratory nurse and works with COVID patients. And so coming to see me, probably not actually any difference in risk. <laughs> um, 
than uh, just going to work for him. So uh, he did come and help me out and look after me a little bit, which is really nice because of the many times I've had to self-isolate over this pandemic now, I've never had any help or support really um, in terms of like people being able to come uh, like help me with housework and stuff. So that was really nice. I mean, there is an argument to be made that um, with most of his patients, he's probably not attaching his face to their face <laughs> um, in the way that we do. But so I was a little bit worried about that, but he, he hasn't gotten sick. So that's good. Um, and to be honest, it really kept me sane uh, over another two weeks of isolation and boredom and frustration and angst. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I think my last little bit of chat is something a little bit more positive, just just a wee nice thing that I came across. Um, so as you've noticed, I'm, I'm big into my seasons, my cycles, my wheel of the year, seasonality, all of that. Um, and so something that I try to do when I'm out and about is notice what are the signs of the seasons turning in my life and in my area, in my environment, right? Because I'm not a farmer. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the, the big agricultural changes don't really <laughs> um, feature in my life. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things um, that you traditionally associate with the seasons that I don't really experience, but I do still see them changing. So I just like to keep an eye out, you know, make a note of the day that I saw like, oh, the crocuses are out or the snowdrops are out or, oh, there is the, the bees have returned for the summer or, oh, the leaves have started to turn. I just like to make a note of like which day of the year I saw those things happening. And I found a new one the other day. Um, I go out once a month uh, over my period and go for a walk and do some augury, watch what the birds are doing, interpret, see, see what vibes and messages I'm getting. Um, for my personal stuff and I saw a new one. I saw all these birds flying in the same direction. And I was like, what is happening? Is this some kind of migration? Hey, those are seagulls. Do seagulls migrate? And I looked it up and they fucking do. So I witnessed some, some actual spring migration um, for the first time, just noticed it out in real life and then looked it up and was like, oh, that's what that is, which is really cool. Did you know that seagulls migrate inland for the cold season, for winter, and then they go back out to the coast um, for spring and summer? And I managed to catch that for two days in a row, um, just on walks at sunset, really clear days. And it was just lovely. It was just like, hmm, kind of kind of witchy, kind of cool. And these are the final spreads. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you had a good time. One quick thing that I need to let you know about uh, before you go. Um, as I said earlier, um, the Academy and the Story Toolkit Workshop have had to be pushed back because of my illness. So if you're interested in the Story Toolkit Workshop, which is uh, a workshop all about how to organize your creativity and your writing using four simple tools, one of which is a modified bullet journal, if you're interested in that, um, or if you're interested in the Story Magic Academy, which is my big fuck off <laughs> storytelling course uh, that pays my bills, all about the plot embryo, all about storytelling principles and designing uh, plots that actually work, that actually hit home, <laughs> um, that have an impact. Uh, those are gonna both be reopening in late April. So it's definitely gonna be April, but like the latter half, um, overlapping with like the last week of April. So keep an eye out for both of those. Um, if you're interested in, in both or either, and you're not already on my email list, um, you're gonna want to sign up to that to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, because if you're just subscribed here on YouTube, then you might not catch the exact times and announcements for that. And it only opens twice a year. Um, so just be aware of that. 
Um, and yeah, that's it. I hope that you are okay wherever you are. I hope that you, even if things are not okay, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.